What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. Alright guys, this story's called, Lady Gets Mad That I Bought My Son An Airplane Seat. I believe this goes here. It turns out really long. I sincerely apologize. It's okay. So I have a son who is currently two and a half years old, but we've been traveling by plane since he was six months old due to our living an 18 hour drive from my family, parents, younger sibling, grandparents, etc. In the US, you generally don't need to buy a plane ticket for a child under two years old. You can buy a seat, like if you want to bring your baby in their carrier or just want to use a car seat, but they can also be considered a lap child and sit in your lap for free. When my son was about one and a half years old, we were flying flying back to my hometown to go visit my family. We were flying on an airline named the opposite of North <laughs> Northeast. On this airline, an adult with a child under six years old, if I recall correctly, gets to board right after the A1 to 10-ish boarding numbers and before the A11 to 60 or whatever it is which was helpful for me to get some extra time to find a seat and settle with my kid. Now, he was under two, so he could have flown for free and sat in my lap. But after the flight we had taken a few months before that, where he was hell on wheels and I was mortified by how terrible we probably made our roommate's flights, I decided to buy him a plane ticket so we would have a little more room for our things. A diaper bag, toys to entertain him, snacks, juice, breast milk, blanket, etc. I hated to feel like I was inconveniencing other passengers with my child when I had to keep him to such a small confined space to begin with. It was better to give him some extra room in the form of his own seat so as to not crowd others when he wanted to get out of my lap or try to look out the window, etc. Plus, then I could sit between him and provide a buffer for his wayward feet. He was generally, and still is, a really good little traveler, but every one and a half year old has their moments, as other parents can understand. I swear I do my best to keep him under control. If you've never flown with a child under two as a lap child, you should know that when you go to check your bags at the airport, you get a normal normal boarding pass for yourself as well as a boarding pass for the child that clearly says lap infant across the top of it. Otherwise, if you buy your child a ticket, they get a normal boarding pass like everybody else with your boarding group or number. This airline has rows of three seats on either side of a very narrow aisle. I tend to stick to the far back rows just in case I need to leave the seat with him when we're in the air and also try to put some distance between us and other passengers. So we board with our family boarding. I grab two seats all the way in the very back row, shove all of our stuff into the seats and go about trying to settle our things in. My my son decided to sit in the seat by the window and watch the ground crew do their thing. I was sitting in the middle seat beside him, the aisle seat was empty, and the plane started to fill up. But again, we were at the very last row, so most people found a seat before they made it to us, and or saw I had a kid with me and decided to sit elsewhere. Can't blame them. When the plane was about three quarters full, I hear someone say, Um, excuse me? in a rather snobby voice. I turned to see a woman, maybe 30s? I'm in my early 20s, with a little girl maybe seven to eight years old. Before I could even respond, the entitled mother demands that I move to the aisle seat and take my son with me so that her daughter could sit by the window. I wanna say that if my son was flying free and was a lap infant, I wouldn't have had an issue with moving to the aisle seat to let the little girl sit by the window if the mom had asked me nicely. However, I had purchased two tickets with my own money, which isn't easy to swing when you're a single mom, and even if I moved to the aisle seat, my son would have the middle seat and she'd have to sit apart from her daughter. I was not going to be used as a babysitter for someone else's kid on a flight even if I don't have my own child to deal with. I tried explaining this to her. When a little something like this. Oh, uh, I would, but I bought two seats, and even if I moved, there'd only be one seat open, so you might want to try somewhere else so you both can sit together. There were still entire rows that were empty on the plane at this point. You're lying! He's clearly not even two, and under two, they fly free and sit in your lap. Please move. Now. Yes, they can fly for free in your lap, but I specifically bought him his own ticket so he could have his own seat in more room. There are several rows a bit farther forward that are still empty and have window seats. 
Well, he's small. You should just hold him. My daughter wants to sit by the window, and I need to be in the last row, so just hold him so we can sit here. The very back row on the other side was taken up already. I'm really sorry, but no, we need the extra space. I bought and paid for the extra seat. I'm not going to give it up just because you feel entitled to this space. Our things are already settled and stowed away. At this point, Entitled Mother is working herself up into a tizzy and has caught the attention of the older couple sitting across the aisle. The husband tries to tell this entitled mother to just choose somewhere else to sit, but she snapped at him to mind his own business. Kinda hard in such a small space. So when she turned her attention back to me and my now fussing child because this strange lady is yelling at mommy, the wife waved down one of the flight attendants who came over. And that went along these lines. Hello, are we all okay over here? No, this girl refuses to put her son in her lap to make room for us, even though he's clearly less than two and can fit in her lap. Flight attendant turning to me. Ma'am, is your child a lap infant? He is less than two years old. See, I told you, make her move. But I did purchase him a ticket because I knew he would appreciate having some extra space to get out of my lap. I had grabbed both of our normal paying customer boarding passes and handed them to the flight attendant. See? That doesn't prove anything. They give boarding passes for lap infants. Turning back to Entitled Mother, flight attendant says, Yes, they do give boarding passes for lap infants, but this is not a lap infant boarding pass. So I'm sorry, but she paid for that seat and there's no assigned seating, so you can't ask her to move. Entitled Mother started going crazy, screaming at me, at the flight attendant. Her child is crying, but I think that may have been more out of embarrassment than that I slash the flight attendant was telling them no. Anyway. Anyways, the flight attendant ended up threatening her to have her removed from the plane by air marshals if she didn't find a different seat. Entitled Mother huffed angrily, promised to write a terrible review, and told the flight attendant specifically that she was going to call opposite of Northeast Airlines corporate office and have her fired for treating Entitled Mother and her daughter so poorly. The daughter did get her window seat further up the plane. The flight attendant rolled her eyes where only I and the older couple could see, and she apologized for her. My kid laughed when the plane took off and then passed out in his own seat with his head on my leg about 20 minutes into the flight and slept the whole time, and the flight attendant gave me a complimentary glass of wine once he was asleep. I told the pilot at the end of the flight how wonderful she is. I saw Entitled Mother inside the airport afterwards as we made our way to baggage, berating a cleaning staff member because the airport Burger King was closed at 11.30 p.m., as if the poor staff member even had control over that to begin with. I pointed a TSA person towards them and went on my merry way to see my not-so-baby sister. This was about a year ago, and I haven't thought about it really since, until one of my coworkers said something that reminded me of it, so I decided to share. Sorry it was so long! Babies on planes are really annoying, but it's not like you can get mad at the parents or something. <laughs> um, if it's really that much of an issue, you can get business class or first class, even though it's expensive. I went on uh, a plane or two planes, I guess, recently, and um, it was it was a pretty good flight. The first one was kind of poopy. I flew JetBlue, and uh, it was an older plane, so they weren't one of the more roomy models. So it was just really uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, and then the second flight was a lot better, uh, the seats were newer, so much more room, and I just played my Nintendo Switch that I got specifically for this plane ride, or these plane rides, the entire time, and I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the battery life. The first flight didn't have any outlets to plug your crap into to charge, but the second one did, and I didn't have to use it, uh, even though it was like a four hour flight. I just played Breath of the Wild for four hours straight, and it was amazing. That game is pretty good. Not, not like the best game ever, like people hype it up to be but it is really really fun in terms of level of enjoyment when i played it the first time um i would say it's around the level of ocarina of time i didn't play it back in the day when it was really something special but i did play it a couple years ago on my 3ds and it was really fun i, I really liked it like the amount of detail in ocarina of time is just utterly fascinating especially when it comes to like the level design when you go into the dungeons or whatever breath of the wild's got a lot of that too i feel like it's a really 
good successor to Ocarina of Time and what it did for open world gaming. Anyways, this is about airplanes. Um, <laughs> I was saying uh, on the second flight, I believe, there was an infant, literally the row behind me. It was this really big Jewish family, okay? And so they had a baby right behind me and it was crying. I'm telling you, it was, it was really crying. However, it didn't matter to me because I had my really nice studio headphones on while I was playing Breath of the Wild, so it didn't really matter to me. But it was crying, I did see it. <laughs> This story's called, Was at a restaurant and had to take my little brother to the bathroom. Entitled mother flips out and grabs him and refuses to let go. Alright, next story. <laughs> this happened this evening. My mother, little brother and sister, 7 and 8, and very well behaved, might I add, and me, female, 16, oldest, sister, were at a restaurant. Dad stayed home because of a cold. A little bit after we sat down to eat, my little brother, oh, commas, man. A little bit after we sat down to eat, my little brother said he needed to use the restroom. <laughs> Dad wasn't there to take him to the boys' room like he usually would, but I also needed to go, so I said I'll take him. Mom said that was fine. My mom has taken all of us to the bathroom before with no problem, so why should we worry? So I took him to the bathroom. It was a rather busy place, but the bathroom was less busy, it seemed. All the stalls were taken. Great. My little bro was dancing around, being a bit impatient, but wasn't causing any trouble. Then finally, a stall opened. It was the large stall. Out came one kid, two kids kids, three kids, four kids, five total little girls who all looked under six. They all seemed reasonably behaved. Then the woman of the hour came out. She didn't look like a stereotypical Karen, more like a stereotypical MLM hun, if anything. She had long, curly blonde hair, had horribly mismatched Lula Roe all over her, and reeked of essential oils. I smiled at her and told my brother he could go. He ran over to the stall until Karen looked down at him and gasped. I smelled trouble. Then she suddenly grabbed the collar of his shirt and said, Um, you can't be in here. My brother looked absolutely shocked. Jay, help me. My big sister instincts kicked in immediately. I immediately confronted her in a slightly mocking tone. Um, excuse me? My brother needs to use the restroom. Get your smelly hands off of my brother right this second before I call security on you. No, he's a boy. He cannot be in here. He's scaring my daughters. He might hurt them. The daughters were calmly talking to each other and giggling around. One of them even said, Cool shit. That man's cool. So no, they, <laughs> they don't look scared at all. I restrained an eye roll and then said in a firmer voice, Ma'am, my brother is a child. He's eight. He just needs to use the restroom. He has no reason to hurt or scare your daughters. He's a kid needing to pee. Again, let go of him now. No, he is a boy and he needs to leave. Boys can't be in here. This is a girl's room. Make him go to the boys' bathroom. I order you so as I am older than you. I give out a large, exasperated sigh. <sighs> Look, lady, small children can go into the restroom regardless of their gender if they're accompanied by their mother, or in this case, their older sister. There is nothing wrong with moms bringing their young sons into the restroom if they need to go. They can't just let a young kid go into the men's room unaccompanied. And in this situation, I am his guardian, not you. I then step closer and gently but firmly grasp her wrist and lift her grip off of my brother's shirt collar, as at this point he started to cry and I know he was extremely scared. Hell, I was scared of her too. I asked him if he was okay and then he hid behind me. Karen let out a weird gaspy squeal kind of thing. It kind of sounded like a cat getting its tail stepped on. <coughs> That's all I can do. Don't touch me! I'll get the staff to throw you out, bimbo! Now this time I did a very obvious eye roll. Don't touch my brother then! And wow! Swearing like that in front of your kids. Have fun with all five of your sweet little girls repeating that to no end. Karen gave me an immense death glare, muttered something under her breath, and then corralled her kids out the door. Finally, she's gone. My brother gets done, and I give him a big hug, and then we skedaddle the heck back to our mom to tell her what just happened. I, thankfully, didn't see Karen again, but still, oof. I never expected to encounter a real life entitled parent. I've just lurked this sub thinking, <laughs> I'll never encounter a Karen. I was wrong. <laughs>
Oh no, my butt fell off because I laughed it off. Oh, oh. Okay, the entitled mother was in no way in the right. However, I feel like at eight years old, that's when you should start probably going to the bathroom by yourself. No, I mean, you probably should have been doing that since you were like four or five or six. Sorry, I had to burp, but I cut it out. Um, But eight years old is a little bit old to be needing assistance for the bathroom but that's just my opinion i could be wrong and stupid point it out please this story's called entitled aunt makes me watch your kids and calls me disrespectful when i ask for a favor okay so this story took place a month ago and it involves me my cousins and my aunt here's the cast there's me entitled aunt 14 year old cousin five year old cousin cousin <laughs> i'm dating a girl i'm very happy with her and she's really been a big step in helping with my depression and overall really good for me my aunt asked me and 14 year old cousin if we could stay home from school and watch five year old cousin and two to three year old cousin i said sure and rescheduled a few tests i had that day when she got home she was being rude but we ignored it Later that week, I asked I wanted to go to my girlfriend's house. It was a Saturday, and Entitled Aunt was going to drive to Kroger to get food. My girlfriend lives right around the corner from Kroger, so I asked. Hey, you're going to Kroger soon, right? Yeah, why? In an annoyed tone, I was wanting to see if you could drop me off at my girlfriend's house. Um, no. Why not? It's right behind Kroger. Because it's not my responsibility. What? It's not my responsibility. So it's my responsibility to watch your kids and risk missing important work at school. But she can't do anything for me? Okay, that's fair. I waited 30 minutes and asked again, thinking maybe there's a different reason. Oh, as I right. Can you bring me to her house when you go? No, I just told you no. Why? You literally have no reason to act like that. I don't like her or support your relationship with her. Um, what is it? Why are you arguing with me about this? You just told me to my face that you don't support my relationship. And you're asking me why I'm arguing about this. Whatever, I need you to watch two to three year old cousin and five year old cousin while I'm gone. No. What? It's not my responsibility. She ended up having my uncle go when he got off work later and I ordered an Uber to go. I would have walked, but it was snowing and I didn't feel up to the cold. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.